Hi, I'm Nicole. And Rebecca. From ConquerBooks.com. And this here is Copper, my new puppy. And today we're talking about Anyone by Charles Soule, a book where anyone can be anyone. So there was some really innovative technology in Anyone, and I was kind of thinking that we should try it out for ourselves. You mean you want me to try it out for you? Yeah. Hey, isn't this just the technology parts we used from Lightspeed Travel? Well, well this yeah. isn't going to do the flash. But didn't you learn anything from Calvin and Hobbes? See, they made the duplicator just by turning the transmogrifier upside down. Whatever. Rebecca, don't pee on me. So when we read the synopsis for anyone, we pretty much knew that we wanted to read it right away. It involved new technologies. It had a very speculative fiction feel. Um, the Oracle Year by Charles Soule, his first novel, was really popular and have heard great things about it. Um, but then also immediately when you read the description, it starts talking about all the things that go wrong with this technology. I think that's kind of where we were like, yeah, we want to see how this goes bad. <laughs> yeah, I think that shows that he has a good handle on it. And he really explored the technology uh, in depth and how it affected the characters and the whole world. He set the story up so that you are um, half in the present, or was it the future? I don't know which one's the present or the future. <laughs> but you're half learning about what happens after this technology has gone global and half learning about what happened when the technology was invented, which was a great, very fascinating way for him to put in the backstory. Yeah, it flowed really well. So Gabby is the main character on the front side of that story, and she is researching technology and solutions for Alzheimer's disease. And she's doing it with this big grant that she signed, but kind of with somebody who's kind of shady. And she's hoping to have this, this big, moment in her life she says to herself every day um, actually this is how the book starts and I kind of liked it I felt like it resonated with how you know you kind of feel today you change the world Gabrielle White said out loud to no one but herself and she finally has one of those days when her experiment seems to go a bit haywire and it sounds almost plausible in the book as you're reading it because there's so many little details but suddenly she finds herself in someone else's body and it's not just anybody else's body, it's her husband's body. And it had this really odd description about finding your mind in someone else's body, how different and heavy and how his joints cracked and how she got sick because she just had this like vertigo sensation. And her husband, Paul, is a professor of music and he kind of gets what she's doing and he believes in her, but at the same time, Maybe he just wishes she would be a little bit more normal and toned down. And she just has this big dream. And instantly she starts to realize all of the things that technology could do, like putting somebody else's mind in somebody else's body. And when you switch to the um, in the future um, story part, you get a sense of how people are using this for tourism. You know, instead of flying across the planet, you can just like, into somebody else's mind to experience what another country is like or if a surgeon has to do a very t particular surgery across the world immediately this could save somebody's life but then there's also the dark share um, which is like the underground way of using this technology no records you um, don't know what somebody else is going to use your body for but you can make a lot of money doing it I really liked the line um, back in the beginning there where she jumps into Paul's body of how you think that all of the ways that you see the world is built into your brain, but how much of that is actually coming out of your physical being and how different it would be to be in somebody else's body. And he takes um, his time exploring the themes of um, racism and attractiveness and what it means to be other people mm -hmm. uh, and he does an amazing job with it he withholds certain um, physical characteristics or even names of some of the characters until it, it 
has a punch coming out until yes. it means something. And then he lets you see it and it makes you go, oh. I like that too because that's really how you interact with people in, in real life. Sometimes you don't know some particular fact about them until after you've already put your foot in your mouth or if you're interacting with somebody online you have very little to go off of and you start making assumptions and so he used that in a really clever way that really added a lot to um, the flash is what they call it Um, being able to you know put your mind in somebody else's and making a lot of statements about society and assumptions and how we go through our days, you know, surrounded by other people who are constantly categorizing us. Um, and it was Gabby's dream that this would like erase all of that, that people could see themselves as equal if you really experience what somebody else is living like. Mm-hmm. Charles Soule has a, a history in comics, a, quite an extensive history, it sounds mm-hmm. like, written a lot of comics for Marvel and DC. And so he really seemed to know what he was doing with um, really weaving these two plots together because you're seeing all the things that go wrong in the past and how it set her up in the future. And now how in the future is she going to fix these things that went wrong in the past? Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if you saw this, but he was a lawyer too. Um, I don't oh. know if he's still practicing. It oh, kind of yeah, makes yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Because there, there's a few characters that are lawyers and mm-hmm. um, thinking about the law around this and the contract that Gabrielle's in with um, this mafia figure who has loaned her the money to um, study Alzheimer's and, and how to cure it, hopefully, then has access to this huge groundbreaking technology that like has the ability to change human kind, human history forever. And she doesn't want him to have it. But She has a contract, a very watertight contract, and so she tries to hide it and she doesn't know what to do. And you don't find out all the things that happen until towards the end of the book, so you get a clear sense of how things went wrong, allowing for things like the dark share to start up where, um, to make a lot of money, you can essentially rent out your vessel. And when you are in the flash, if you're going into somebody else's mind your physical body will just lie unconscious and the other person's mind will just kind of be moved to the back like they won't be aware of what you're doing with their body and so you can't really be certain of anything who's gonna you know take care of your body and who's not one of the things that i enjoyed about the book is uh paul and gabby have a baby girl who they refer to as the kitty cat and of course the first couple pages i was like is this a real cat (laughs) (laughs) no it's a baby it's a um (laughs) baby but parenting is one of those things that can't really be faked so the emotions and the trials that go into it are best explained by people who have been through it Mm -hmm. Um, and I always appreciate that in a book when you can tell that somebody knows what it means to have kids um, because it really adds another layer to the story it gives the character something extra to fight for the biggest thing that they're ever going to fight for Right. I'm watching um, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel right now, which is awesome. But her kids are always disappearing. And, like, Mm -hmm. you see them for one episode and then you don't see them for four episodes. And it's kind of frustrating because you're like, how is she doing this? Like, does she not care? Like, obviously she has help. But, you know, it's just one of those things that you think about when it's introduced into a story. Like, oh, are are they going to treat this realistically? Or is it just kind of something the author made up to give the characters more depth? Yeah. He did not just with the baby but he did that through the whole book really having a good view because there's so many different types of characters he had such a good view on what a particular character uh, would be dealing with in their life what they're struggling with what they would do in certain certain situations Mm -hmm. so I just thought that with the theme of anyone can be anyone but are you still yourself he really did a great job looping that all together with his diverse set of characters yeah and I feel like that's been a big theme in sci-fi books in the last year and a half in general um we recently reviewed fall or dodge in hell and that too had to do with you know uh, closing the link between your mind and your body and being able to put or take or upload your mind elsewhere and i feel like that's been popping up quite a bit and so this really seems like the next level up of that of you know Mm -hmm. um we you know we're joking about light speed travel earlier and stuff like that and we've seen it in popular culture and in novels and we don't know how it's going to happen but you kind of get the sense that like maybe it will happen someday somehow and this kind of feels like this could be that 
in 40 years in popular culture. Yeah, um, like, I can see that. It could be normalized enough that you kind of do think maybe it will happen someday. Hmm. That's an interesting point. Yeah. It was a really good story. It kept me hooked until the end. So I definitely recommend reading it. It was fun. Yeah, and um, you did the audiobook, right? I did. It was my first audiobook. Um, <laughs> I, it, we had four days left to finish this book, and I didn't even have the book. So I was like, well, I'm going for the audiobook. And I wasn't sure I was going to like it. I felt mm -hmm. like I really enjoy seeing the words written on the page, especially when it comes to names. Um, but it was great. Mm -hmm. These actors like get particular voices for the characters, and they're really into it emotionally and they really mm -hmm. draw you in so I mean I liked it I don't know how many I'm going to continue to do I'll probably swap back and forth but mm -hmm. I liked it it was good yeah and so is this the first time you're seeing like the physical copy I've seen photos of okay. it okay um, because I was really interested like just the printing was a little bit different printing it on the inside yeah there's and no same dust jacket with, yeah so you can see. same with his bio in the back um, I feel like publishers are getting a little bit unusual with the printing like when we did mm. um Gideon the ninth, all of the pages are just like pure black on, on the outer edge. And so that's just something kind of interesting to see how printing is changing too right now. The book we're reading next for January is called The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez, which is quoted to be like Justin Cronin's The Passage crossed with M.K. Jemison. So it comes out January 14th. It's a doozy at 400 pages, but it should be good. It's about a dying planet our planet and how humanity has had to flee from the planet and a gifted boy may be able to change all of that for civilization. So read along with us please. We would love it. We'll see you next time. Bye.